green salt lab, you're doing the analysis of the green salt. This is kind of like the reverse of week two. In week two, you use the known amount of oxalate to determine the exact concentration of the potassium permanganate. Now that you know the concentration of the potassium permanganate, you're going to use it to determine the amount of oxalate in the green salt. Now the final step is determine the amount of iron that is in the green salt. To do this, remember that the iron is in the Fe3 plus state. So we need to add excess zinc to reduce the iron to the Fe2 plus state, which is shown in this net equation over here. Once we do that, we can oxidize the iron Fe2 plus and titrate it with KMnO4, which is seen in this overall net equation over here. We see, the, we see the 5 to 1 mole ratio with the iron and the magnate, and we can use this in our calculations later on. Here are the supplies that you will be using in this week of the Green Salt Lab. You will need zinc dust, 3 molar sulfuric acid, and once again, you'll be using potassium permanganate. Don't forget to write the molarities in your lab notebooks and wear your safety goggles and your gloves. Weigh two samples of your green salt to approximately 0.1 to 0.12 grams and place them in a flask. Dissolve the samples in about 5 ml of 3 molar H2SO4. If necessary, warm to dissolve the sample. Dilute each sample to about 75 ml with distilled water. Heat the solution to about 85 to 90 degrees Celsius, and then titrate as you did in the standardization. The endpoint color change may be different, and then also make sure to run a blank. Obtain a capsule of zinc dust, and then pour the zinc dust into three approximately equal piles. You will be using two of them for your two runs, and the third one for running a blank. Heat the solution until it almost boils. Then add one portion of zinc dust to the hot solution. Cover the flask and wait until the yellow color disappears. Set up a filtration as shown. Take the hot flask and then decant the hot solution through the filter paper. This is to get rid of the zinc particles. If there are any zinc particles left over, rinse the funnel with about 5 ml of distilled water. Then titrate the solution until it turns pink and then record the final burette reading to two decimal places. Carry out a second iron determination using your second flask from part B and then titrate the blank from part B using the third portion of zinc dust. So now the simplest way to explain how to do this for your empirical formula is just to get the moles of oxalate and the moles of iron and just get the ratio of moles of oxalate to iron and then determine the moles of potassium that you'll need to make the overall net charge to be zero. If you have any other questions, just see your professor or your instructor and they will be able to help you. Make sure to read your lab packets thoroughly and take your readiness test and enjoy the lab.